So let's move on to doing our shooting. So I'm going to do a new sort of section here. I'm not going to use the fixed update. I'm just going to use an event. So the event I'm going to use is I'm going to go and find it out. So events, and I want to do some input and I will do on button input. So you may have noticed earlier when we checked the input manager, there was a, an axis called fire one and I'm going to use that input. So I'm going to do fire one and I'm going to do the action of hold. So when I hold down the button, it will fire multiple weapons, multiple bullets. So let's first create our bullet and our bullet transform locations. So I need to add in a bullet prefab uh, variable. So that's going to be a game object. And I'm going to add in another game object, which is our bullet transform. It's just the location that our bullet's going to spawn. So I can either set these in the variable window here, or I can set them in on the inspector over here. So I, I've got a shot spawn already set up, so I'll just drag that one in. Oh, I haven't actually set the variable yet, one second. So player, object, let's do bullet, spawn. And then we want to have both of these as game objects. So game object and game object. And there we have it. So shot spawn goes into our bullet spawn. And then I have a prefab already set up for our shot. So we can drag that into our uh, game object for our bullet. Cool, so now I've got those variables set up. The next thing I have to do is to get them into our editor. So I'll add a unit and I'm gonna to go to variables, object, and then we're gonna get the bullet. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my position and rotation of my shot spawn because we need them for when we're instantiating an object. Now instantiating means it's just a nice word for saying spawn the object at this location with this rotation. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to my variables again. I'm gonna to go to object and I'm gonna get my bullet spawn. Now I wanna get the bullet spawns transform as well as the bullets uh, rotation. So I'm going to search transform and I'm going to get my position and I'm going to get my rotation as well. So I can either search get position or get rotation and I can search through all the ones that are available. So as you see here, we'll get the ones for rigid bodies as well as the ones for transform. But I just want the transform one because there's no rigid body on my shot spawn. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new node and I'm going to search for the unit called instantiate. Now this is the tricky part of trying to type. Instantiate. Okay, and then we want to instantiate our game object at the with the original, the position, and the rotation. We don't want the parent, we just want the free input one. So we have our original as the bullet. There we go. And then we have our transform as our position. This get transform. Get the position, sorry. And then we have our get rotation as our rotation. Now the final thing we need to do, as we've done before, is drag in the logic to the instantiate. And now, when I press play, we should be able to uh, press control or uh, left mouse button to uh, shoot some objects. But you may notice we're just going crazy now because we don't have any time limits. So I can literally win this game pretty easily, just keep spamming it. As long as I move in time. Oh. Yeah, maybe we should add in some sort of uh, time lo like limit on the actual bullet. So I'm first going to set up my group again, like I've done before. So this will be the spawn of the bullet. And then I'm going to set up my next section. So my next section is going to be to uh, have two new variables, one to check if we can fire. So we want a time time sort of to add to the fire rate. So that will be our fire rate. And then the second one will be our, like if to be our next fire look like time. So I'm gonna do the first one, a uh, fire rate. So this will be the interval at which we can fire. So this will need to be a float. And I'm gonna set it to be 0 0.25 seconds. Now the second one is going to be uh, next fire. So this will determine if 
this will be checked about against time to see if we can fire. So I'll add that one and that needs to be a float as well. And we don't need a value for this because it will be incremented by using our file rate. So let's create those in the actual graph. So the first one's going to go over here. We're going to do add a unit and then we're going to go to our variables object and then we want to get next fire. And then the next one we're going to do is we're going to get our time node. So we want to right click add unit and then we'll search time. And then we can get the time. So here we go, tech time. And then we want to uh, check them against each other. So we want to use a Boolean. So if I right click and search add unit, you'll notice there is a section here called um, logic. So we want to check if they're uh, greater than. So the first one is going to be our time node is the A and then our B is going to be our next fire. Now we want to have some sort of logic come out of this. So we'll use some control and a branch. So this is the same as using say an if statement if you're used to programming. And then we'll say if the, the Boolean that we're checking is if A is greater than B. And then we can also drag that into our branch, uh, into our logic. And then we'll add the, if it's true, we'll spawn an object. Now, at the moment, that won't do much because we're not incrementing our next fire. So the next thing we need to do is to actually increment it ourselves. So we're going to update the fire rate. But first, let's actually set our group over here. So it'll be like check time against next fire. And then the final one is over here. So we'll go to variables, go to object, and then we'll get the next fire because we're going to increment our fire rate with that. And then we want to also get the time node. So we're always staying up to time. So I'll search time again and time and then get time. And then we want to add these two together. So I'll drag it out and I'll have, there should be an add node right here. And then we add the two together and the result should be set into our uh, next fire. Oh wait, sorry, I've got the wrong node here. So this actually needs to be our fire rate instead of next fire. So luckily, if we're in the object variables, we can actually choose between any of our variables on that object. So I'll change it to fire rate, and then we want to set this onto our next fire. So I'll go add unit, go to variables, object, and then set next fire. And then we want to set the A plus B of this into our next fire. And there we have it. So now we need to add in the logic from our branch. So we'll drag that logic over. And then hopefully we should now see the time increment the variable and being able to shoot every 0.25 of a second. So when I shoot, you see the time increments. So at the moment we have our time at 5.43 and then we're adding 0.25 to it. So our resulting is 5.6468, sorry. And then it will check it against, oh, okay. So there's not enough time at the moment. So we need to wait a bit before we actually do make it true again. So we can go through the branch and instantiate an object. So if I hold it down, it won't go crazy like I did before. Now, if I wanted to, I can change the object variables. So I'll change the fire rate to like 0 0.2. Uh, let's say 0 0.1 actually. And then let's play it. And then you'll see I shoot faster. And you'll see in the in the graph, the logic is going through a lot faster. So you'll see lots of like dots going through. And it's very visual for helping you to understand what your script is doing. Cool. Now the last thing I'm going to do uh, is to add in some sound effects. So on my player already, there is a sound effects audio source. Now, what we're going to do is we're just literally going to add in uh, audio source and audio source literal. And then we could just, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Let's go to audio, audio source and then play. 
So the one we want to play is the one on ourself. So I can literally just drag that in if I wanted to. And then attach the logic into the spawning and then the setting. So if I press play now, we should be able to shoot and hear a sound playing at the same time. So let's see. There we go, we have our audio playing. So we have a nice little game going now. And if I manage to not die, it will probably go on forever. And I died. But yeah, so this is a great tool. Uh, it's available for free if you purchase a, a plus subscription anytime within March. Uh, so I'd recommend doing it if you haven't, if you're not really into programming and you want to sort of learn about the programming before you actually get into scripting. This is a great way to sort of leap leapfrog yourself into getting to programming. Now let's see this in comparison to our script. So this is what it looks like in visual scripting. It's a bit easier to understand. You have your section set up and then we have the script version, which is this, which is a bit more intense than the visual scripting. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in chat now. I'm willing to answer them uh, at any point. I'm actually going to just add in a bit more groups here, so I'll drag this one out and do this one as the setting of the time. Set time. No, oh, not time. So you may notice there, there's a couple of tips that we can do. Um, so one tip is that, as you might have noticed, when I double clicked on an object, like a group, I can see that object, like the group in particular, so I'll double click it and it takes you to that object. Now another one we could do is we can press shift and space and it should make the whole uh, node view full screen, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we can also add in like another one here, so we can just say plays audio source and stuff like that. Uh, Powell Dabrowski asks, can you hide unused sockets to make it look more compact? Um, I don't know. I haven't tried it myself. Um, it's best to ask Laszlo as he's the guy who made it. I think he might be in chat at the moment. Uh, we can have a quick look through like the documentation. So yeah, with uh, when you buy this, you actually do get like a whole manual, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'll open it in Chrome and then you can have a quick look. So we have this whole sort of setup where we can find answers to our questions, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's search uh, height sockets. So unfortunately it doesn't look like there's any hink on hiding sockets. Um, but you can create your own uh, variables, which is pretty cool. So for instance, if I wanted to have a int array, I can do it by creating a script and just setting it so it's an int array and then we can have like that within our actual visual scripting as well. So there is uh, an opportunity to expand the actual uh, bolt sort of libraries if you wanted to, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to wrap it up. So thanks for watching. Um, just to remind you that this is available for free if you purchase a Plus or Pro subscription. So thanks for, thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed the stream.